Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my first sit down video in a really, really long time. Um, I'm a little out of practice. Also, I still don't have my usual like sit down video set up because I haven't replaced my broken tripod. And so we're still making do with what I have right now. So again, if the camera is shaky, I do apologize. But anyway, welcome to another recent reads video. It's been a really long time since I've done one of these, I feel. And I have a whole lot of books to talk about. It's been a while. If you are new to my channel and you've not watched any of my recent reads before, these are going to be books that I've read in between like my reading vlogs that I haven't talked about in other videos yet, or I haven't given final thoughts on yet. Usually I like to order them a little bit, but today we're kind of just flying by the seat of my pants and we're just going to go in chronological order. Um, so without further ado, let's jump right into it. I'm going to be looking at my phone because I've read some of these so long ago that I don't even remember what I rated them. And so I'm going to be flipping back and forth between um, Goodreads and stuff. Um, but without further ado, let's jump right into it. The first book that I have to talk about is Winnie Zhang Unleashes a Legend. This is the newest middle grade from Katie Zhao. Um, I love her. I have pretty much read, I believe, every book that she's come out with. The only one I haven't read is her upcoming... Is it out yet? I'm actually not sure. Her The sequel to... What's it called? How We Fall Apart, where her YA thriller series. I really liked How We Fall Apart um, for what it tried to do, um, and I thought it was a fun time, but I don't know if I'm like super, super interested in the sequel, to be quite honest with you, just because I feel like we left off in a good place in the first book. I also don't know if it's like a direct sequel or if it's just like a companion novel. I'm not 100% sure. But anyway, Winnie Zang Unleashes a Legend is another middle grade series of hers. Um, I love The Dragon Warrior. It's probably my favorite of her series. Actually, I really like Last Gamer Standing as well. But this one is probably my least favorite of all her books that I've read, to be quite honest with you. I think I gave it three stars or maybe 3.5 stars, but in my heart of hearts right now, I would say looking back on it, it's a three star book. It's fine. It's fun, but it wasn't like as good as her other middle grades that I've read. But basically the story follows this main character Winnie. She is I believe in her first year of middle school or she's going into middle school um, and she's going to be attending school with like her arch nemesis from Chinese school David. Um, and they are both super competitive, super like overachieving students. But one day Winnie decides to bake these mooncakes for her school's bake sale. And in doing so she accidentally unlocks the spirit of her like shaman grandmother and she also inadvertently um, unleashes like spirits coming into the human world. She has to work with her grandmother. Her grandmother ends up teaching her how to become a shaman and the story kind of goes from there. She's you know battling um, spirits and demons and stuff. It's a lot of fun. It reminds me a little bit of like a middle grade version of um, Jeannie Lowe um, by FCE which is a series that I really really love as well. Um, but this one I would say what I really really liked about this book is I really liked the way that the sister dynamic between Winnie and her sister were handled. Um, Winnie constantly feels like she's kind of like in the shadow of her sister and so she wants to overachieve because of that and that's something that I feel like is really relatable to a lot of like younger siblings of like especially of like immigrant families and having those expectations and wanting to live up to the sister that you look up to. I think that that relationship was explored really well. Um, what I didn't like about this book is I don't know. I just feel like it did not have the same level of like charm that, for example, Dragon Warrior by the same author has. I also found that for me personally, this book had way too many pop culture references. And if you are new to this channel and you didn't know, uh, pop culture references in books are one of my pet peeves. Like I just feel like if they are used sparingly, it's okay. But more often than not, it just dates your book. Um, and I just don't like them. I just don't like them. And I feel like there were way too many in this book. And I think I saw a few reviews saying that if you like Percy Jackson, you'll like the series. And I think that's like sort of true. I would actually say I comp this book more to like the Men in Black type of middle grade. So like something like an Amari and the Night Brothers, that kind of thing. Except I, I actually like Amari a lot better um, than this book. But if you are looking for a Katie's Out book that is comparable to Percy Jackson, I would actually say check out her debut series, uh, The Dragon Warrior and the Fallen Hero. This one feels more like supernatural rather than like an urban fantasy. Even though they're kind of like... There's a very fine line between the two. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, I feel like I've talked about this book <laughs> long enough. Um, but the next book I have to talk about is Kaikei. I feel like I talked about this, or my, at least my initial thoughts about this book, in a vlog somewhere already. So I won't spend too much time on it. But I ended up giving this book 
3.5 stars. I feel like I liked the first half of this book far better than the second half. Um, I think the first half of this book for me was like a solid four star. The second half of this book was probably a three star, which so I settled somewhere in the middle. Basically, this book is a reimagining of the character Keiki from the Ramayan. Um, and she in the original, I, from my understanding, granted, I don't know that much beyond a couple of Google searches, but from in the original, from what I understand, she was painted as like a villain because she banished Rom um, and set up this whole series of events. And she's kind of painted as this like jealous, you know, vindictive woman. And the author, I believe, wanted to reframe that and um, portray her as like, uh, not so much a hero, but like, just an individual with like autonomy. And I do feel like she actually successfully did that. Um, I really enjoyed the writing style. I thought that it was not like anything special. Like I didn't feel like it was like very flowery or anything like that, but I did feel like it was easy to read. It was easy to understand, which I feel like for me has been a huge problem with debuts recently. And so I really enjoyed the fact that I could read this book and it made sense to me. You know, <laughs> I know that's a very low bar, but that's where we're at at this point. One of the themes I really, really liked about this book is this theme of like, and it's a theme that I like across many books, but it's this theme of like a woman who lives in this deeply patriarchal society who does whatever she can um, within the confines given to her by society and like kind of pushing the envelope a little bit um, and just doing whatever she can to help other women in society and other marginalized people. And I really like that trope. Another series that I feel like does this really, really well is The Dandelion Dynasty by Ken Liu, which is one of my favorite series of all time, if not my favorite series of all time. I don't know. But I will say one thing I didn't like about the way this, it was executed in this book is that while in the first half of the book, I feel like it was really seamless. It was just kind of like woven into the narrative and it wasn't like you were beat over the head with it. And in the second half of the book, though, I do feel like we kind of delved into the like being hit over the head with it kind of territory, which is not my preference when it comes to reading. Um, so I didn't really love that. I think my two other main issues with this book were the pacing. I do feel like this book kind of dragged on a little bit and I kind of feel like the ending was also like really rushed, which didn't make sense to me because we spent so much time kind of just like developing the characters and then at around the two-thirds mark like nothing was happening and you were just waiting for things to happen and then the ending was just like in your face so much was going on and it was just like I didn't feel like the pacing quite worked for me and the other thing that kind of bothered me and that I didn't love as much is that while I feel like the main character um, was really really well developed and I feel like she was super nuanced and fantastic as a character I feel like the side characters did not get that level um, of nuance. I do feel like like the villains in this book were not nuanced either and they just felt a little cartoonish because they weren't very like multi-dimensional in the same way that Taikei is because she was like super nuanced like a little bit morally gray like some questionable things that she was doing but at the end of the day you know that her heart is like pure and like she has good intentions and so like I really enjoyed her as a character but the other characters not as much. Um, one thing that I loved about this book was the female friendships um, but I do feel like again this was focused on more at the beginning of the story um, in the first half of the book and so as the book went on and this became a smaller component of the book I started like you know loving the book less and less if that makes sense um, but all in all it's still really a good book and I definitely recommend it for sure. The next book I read was Vita Nostra um, and I didn't give this a rating and my review on Goodread just says I have no idea what the fuck I read but I read it so make of that what you will. And that's exactly still how I feel about it. This is a dark academia fantasy book um, and it is I believe translated from Russian but the authors are Ukrainian if I am not mistaken. Um, but I could be wrong there. But in this book, we are following our main character, Sasha, who at the beginning of the book, she goes on vacation to like the beach with her mom for the summer. And she meets this like strange man on the beach. And this man tells her to like come to the beach every morning at like 4am or something ridiculous. I don't remember the exact details. Um, and go skinny dipping in the beach, basically. And every day she does this. And then every day after she does this, she throws up a coin like a gold coin or something. And then she goes home and then this man like shows up near her home and then tells her she has to go on a run every day in the morning. And after this run, every day in the morning, she throws up another coin. And after some time, and she's like accumulated these coins, she ends up go using these coins to like gain admission into this like mysterious like school 
in the middle of nowhere. And basically what happens at the school is that like, you have to follow the rules. And if you don't, then someone in your family or like one of your loved ones gets killed or like tortured or injured. And it is so fucking weird. Like, I really don't want to say much beyond this like ba very basic premise because this book is so weird. And to be quite honest with you, I do feel like most of it went over my head a little bit. Like there were some weird conversations about like language and linguistics and like, I don't know, it was like very, very strange, but I can't, and I can't say I enjoyed this book, but I also can't say that I regretted my time with this book. It was just like a very strange experience. Would I recommend this book? I'm really not sure because I, again, don't really know what I read. Um, I feel like if you like really weird shit, you might enjoy this book or you might be, just be like fascinated by this book, which is I think how I felt about it. I didn't enjoy it. I didn't particularly like it, but I was very like fascinated from start to finish. Um, I will also say though, there are no chapters in this book. So if that is a problem, um, it was a problem for me. Like it took me a while to get through this because again, there's no chapters in this book. There's only like part one, two and three and that's it. Um, and so it's a lot, it's a lot. The next book I read was The Lost Hero, which is the first book in the whatever it's called, the second Percy Jackson series. Um, I don't really have much to say. This was a reread for me. I'm trying to like slowly make my way through these books and also finally finish the series because I actually never finished the series um, because I got tired of waiting for them to come out. I think I got to the Mark of Athena or something, but I ended up giving this one two stars in the end and I've realized it's because I just really do not like Jason. I really do not like Jason. Piper is like mediocre. She's fine um, as a character. I really like Leo, but that's about it. Jason though, fucking horrible. What a terrible protagonist. I do not like him. He's a whiny little bitch. I do not like him. But because of that, I just feel like this book didn't hold up on reread because also you you already know the like plot twist at the end. So it's like not even exciting in that sense. Um, and so I gave this two stars. Um, the next book I have to talk about is Flip the Script by Lila Lee, which is a YA contemporary romance. Um, I really, really liked Lila Lee's first novel, um, YA novel. What's it called? I'll Be the One. This book takes place in the same version of reality as I'll Be the One. Like, there are definitely, like, callbacks to the main character, um, from the first book, but they're not really, like, connected in any way beyond that. Um, and this was just a really fun book. I gave this, I think, 3.5 stars, um, and basically this is a sapphic rom-com. Is it a com? No, it's just, like, a sapphic romance, um, but basically we're following our main character, Hannah. She is a, uh, budding actress, um, and she's on the show with this, like, popular guy. I think he might be an idol. I can't remember, but he's like super popular and they begin to start fake dating for their drama that they're in together to like boost up ratings. Um, but that ends up not being enough. So they actually pull in a friend of Hannah's who is like another actress and she becomes kind of like the second female lead of this TV show. And underneath all of this though, it's kind of like a friends to lovers kind of situation where she's kind of like fake dating this guy, but she's also like in love with her co-star, the female co-star. So it's really cute. It's just like fun, fluffy. Um, it's a good time. I didn't, again, quite love it as much as I'll Be The One. Like I feel like I really loved the family dynamics in I'll Be The One and I don't feel like we got much of that here in this book. Um, but I still really enjoyed it. I do recommend it if you are looking for like a cute YA sapphic romance. The next book I read was Twisted Love by Anna Huang. And I saw a lot of hype about this book. I saw a lot of buzz about this book. I think honestly, <laughs> I've heard about this book before, but I think the main reason why I heard about this book was the whole thing, the whole drama on like book Twitter or, or book Instagram with that one bookstagrammer who was like, you don't deserve arcs. Um, and that whole debacle was about the sequel to Twisted Love. And what, and because of all that, I, this name was in my head and then it came on Libro FM and so I was like, you know what, whatever, I will listen to it. And also Cindy K is one of the narrators. Um, I will say this is one of my least favorite of Cindy K's narration. And I think it's because I actually don't like her male voices. Like when she does male voices, I don't like it. Um, and because this is a romance, so she's like doing some of the voices for the guy as well. Um, I was not a fan of the narration. I hated the male narrator. The man cannot enunciate anything. I was like struggling to understand this name. Anyway, all in all, did not like this book. I gave it one star. It was a, a maybe like a two star experience for the book. And then like the audiobook lowered it a little bit, but also like the whole book was so fucking absurd. Like this is a, 
I'm so not like well versed enough in the world of romance to tell you like what subgenres this falls in, but it's basically just like this really toxic relationship. If you are into relationships where men feel like women are possessions to be had, you might like this book, but I am not one of those people, okay? I do not think that women are possessions to be owned, and I don't find it sexy in any way, shape, or form. And so I did not enjoy this book. There was also this weird fucking mafia subplot situation. I don't even know. It was like so fucking weird. It was not good. And then at the end, the he he started singing and I was like, what the fuck is going on? And so I gave it one star. It was not good. I didn't like this. The next book I have to talk about is The Woman in the Library. Um, I feel like I talked about the beginning of this book in a vlog and it was actually going quite well, but I ended up giving it two stars in the end because basically this book is a kind of like a not quite a locker room mystery, but definitely like just like a classic murder mystery that takes place in a library. But basically the way the book is set up is that this mystery that we're, we're following and trying to solve is actually like a book within the book. And then there's like another layer on top of that where the author of um, this like mystery novel that we're reading is corresponding with this like other like aspiring writer, like a beta reader type of situation. Um, and things about him get revealed through his letters. Um, and to be quite honest, I just thought this book was not well executed. Like I didn't feel like the payoff for having these like, l this like layer of like letters really paid off. Like I didn't quite understand why we had to do that. And then I also just feel like certain things were not handled well, but I can't at this point in time, it's been so long since I read it, I can't distinctly tell you what it is I didn't like, but there were a lot of things where I felt like the author was like trying to be like socially aware, but I don't feel like those points were handled very well, if that makes sense. Um, again, I don't have concrete examples because I've forgotten them all, but that's how I felt at the time. I'm gonna go faster because um, I have a lot of books left on this list and I haven't, I haven't even gone through half of them, but um, the next book I read was The City Inside. Um, this was kindly sent to me by Tor.com um, and I like this book. I, can, I think I give it like three stars in the end. Um, this is a cyberpunk kind of like near future uh, sci-fi that takes place in Delhi in India um, and I thought this was interesting-ish in the sense that like I felt like the themes explored in this book were interesting. There's, you know, a lot of conversations about capitalism and surveillance and data privacy. Um, and then there's also this like whole sexual harassment plot line situation. Um, and there's conversations about xenophobia, which I thought was interesting. And again, I just feel like this book had a lot of interesting themes. I just don't feel like the execution was there. I think it's like a 200 and something page book, maybe if that, like it's a really short book and it just like has too much going on for it. Um, I've seen a lot of reviews that share the same opinion where they're, they think that it needs to be longer. I actually don't know if it needs to be longer. I actually feel like there's not enough plot and the characters are not strong enough to carry a longer book. I think what this book needed to be was a short story collection. Um, I think this book needed to be a short story collection, maybe with some interconnectedness, like some shared characters, whatever. But I think it needed to be, it needed some structure. Like it needed to be like, here's like, let's explore this theme a little bit. Let's explore this theme a little bit. But because it was this like ongoing narrative, or like an attempt at an ongoing narrative, but exploring all these different things. Like, I just don't think it worked in execution, but the concepts were there and I thought it was interesting. And I do think that if you are interested in the concepts, it's definitely worth a read. Um, and the other thing I did like actually was the writing. I thought that the narrative voice, like the author's voice was quite witty and funny. And I actually did really enjoy that. Um, so I definitely will be checking out what the author writes next. I just was not the biggest fan of this book. The next book I read was The Embroidered Book. I'm not going to talk too much about this one because I know that I have talked about this in a vlog before. Um, but I didn't finish it in a vlog, so I'll just give my final rating here. I gave it 3.25 stars in the end. I really, really love the writing. I really love the politics. And I thought that the character work was also really good. And I loved the magic system. The only problem with this book is that it's 600 pages long and it probably could have been 200 pages shorter. And so the second half of the book was definitely a bit of a slog. And so that really, really affected the writing for me. I think if it was a short shorter book. It could have been like four stars, maybe even 4.5 for me. Um, but basically this is like a magical historical reimagining of Marie Antoinette and her sister Maria Carolina. Is that her name? 
I can't remember. But anyway, moving on. The next book I read was What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. This is my first T. Kingfisher book. This is a retelling, I believe, of some Edgar Allan Poe story. Something, something about the House of Usher. I'm not sure. I've not read any Edgar Allan Poe. Um, but basically in this book, it takes place in this like haunted mansion almost. And throughout the story, we're following our main character, Alex, who is this retired soldier. Um, and they get a letter from an old friend of theirs, um, Madeline, is that her name? One of the Usher siblings. Um, and she's dying, basically. And she's and her brother is also ill. And like their house is just like falling into ruin. Um, and so Alex goes to visit and just tries to help however they can and it's just like a very like atmospheric slow burn kind of like horror novel. I ended up rating this one 3.5 stars. I think by the end of the book I actually really liked the book but the problem is I was so close to DNFing this book like so many times throughout the first like 60% of this book um, to the point where I don't think I can give it a higher rating because of that. Like it was definitely very, very slow, I felt. Um, and maybe just because I'm not familiar with the original story. So like I didn't know where it was going. And I was just like, I'm bored. I am really bored by this book. And for context, I read this book. I don't know if it made international news or whatever. But there's a day here in Canada, where one of the basically we only have like three telecoms uh, providers. And so one of the telecoms provider mine went down for like an entire day. And so I didn't have a phone, I didn't have internet, I like was offline, essentially for an entire day. And I had nothing to do but to read this book. And I still struggle to get through it. So like given that context, I don't think I can rate it higher. But I will say that by the end, I really, really enjoyed the ending of this book. And I and I, and I understood what it was trying to do throughout the book. Um, and I definitely will be checking out more T. Kingfisher. Um, I really, really liked this book a lot. The next book I read is A Romance. This is The Romance Recipe by, what's the author's name? Ruby Barrett. And I read this because Natalie Nottis is one of the narrators. And also I was in the mood for a sapphic romance. And I gave this like two, 2.5 stars in the end. I liked it, but I didn't love it. I didn't fully buy the romance between the two main characters ultimately. This is basically a romance between these like two women. One of them is like the head chef at a restaurant and the other one is like the owner of the restaurant. I'm not the biggest fan in general of like employer employee relationships. I know that they're like semi partners but like one of them is still the owner right like even if you're head chef you're not the owner like whatever. There's also this like reality tv competition element to it that I just didn't care for whatsoever. The sex scenes in this book were fantastic and there were like a good number of them so I enjoyed it for the smut but like aside from that I didn't really enjoy this book unfortunately. Um, the next three books I want to talk about are the first three books in the uh, A Series of Unfortunate Events by Lemony Snicket. So that is The Bad Beginning, The Reptile Room, The Wide Window. If you don't know what this series is about it's following these three children, um, these three siblings, the Baudelaire children. At the beginning of the first book they are orphaned. Their parents like died in a fire um, and basically they got sent off to live with like a distant relative called Count Olaf um, who is basically just after their fortune. And this series is about them trying to escape the clutches of Count Olaf um, as they go from like one guardian to another. Um, and I love this series growing up. This was probably my favorite series, one of my favorite series anyway, growing up. It was definitely one of the formative series in my life. Um, and definitely one of the series that made me fall in love with reading. Um, and rereading this was like so much fun. And I'm going to continue rereading them. Um, and I just like have so much much fun reading these. Like the humor in them is dark but like hilarious. Of the three I would say my favorite is the third book which I think might be a controversial opinion um, because I've seen a lot of people not liking the third book but I really like the third book. It takes place in this like cliff seaside town and so I feel like the vibes of it are like really great and the atmosphere is really great. Um, has slightly like spooky vibes but is like obviously not that spooky because it's a kids book. Um, but I really really like the series and I'm going to be continuing on as I mentioned. Um, I don't think I rated these. I rarely rate like childhood rereads because like I find it hard to rate them objectively. Um, and one of the things I love about the series I do want to mention is that I love how I, I remember how it made me feel and how it made me feel seen. Because one of the main themes in this series is like 
how adults don't believe children. I think as a kid when I read this, I felt really seen because I felt like, you know, I was always feeling like I didn't have a voice, especially when it came to adults and how like adults just never believe children. And I think that's such an important like message. And I think that that's why this series resonated with me so much as a kid. Um, and so rereading it as an adult now is so interesting because I'm able to kind of pinpoint these like themes. Whereas as a kid, I was just like, I just love these characters and I could relate to them, but I didn't know how. Um, so it's just really interesting reading this now as an adult. Um, but anyway, the next book I read was Light from Uncommon Stars by Rika Aoki. And I know that this is such a beloved book in the community. And I gave this somewhere in between like a 3.5 to a 4 stars. I really, really enjoyed this. Um, I hybrid read this. Um, so I listened to the audiobook for some of the times and then I read it some other times. And I really like the writing. I think the writing is beautiful. Um, but I really love the narration by Cindy Kay in this audiobook. So highly recommend the audiobook if you are into that. But if you don't know what this book is, it's often described as like a cozy sci-fi which I kind of would sort of disagree with like I don't know if it's entirely cozy it's more that it is like a quiet sci-fi I don't know if cozy is quite the right word for it but basically we follow kind of like a number of main characters but one of our main characters Shizuka she is this violinist um, but most famously she is known for kind of mentoring these um, incredible prodigies and and has boosted all of them to fame but what people don't know about her is that she actually has a deal with the devil to basically hand over the souls of seven violinists over I believe 50 years and she is on her 50th and her last year and she still needs to hand over one more violinist and that's her setup. Another main character we follow is Katrina who is a very talented self-taught violinist and she is also a trans woman um, but she has no interest really in like classical music. Shizuka ends up taking her as her student um, but is kind of shocked by the fact that she doesn't you know, want to become a famous kind of classical musician. Um, all she wants to do is play game music and anime music and upload those to YouTube and become like YouTube famous, basically. Um, and then another character we follow is Aluthier, um, who is responsible for maintaining Shizuka's violins. Um, and she's the Luthier that they work with. In their family, usually it's like the males in their family who get... Um, who inherit kind of the business um, and inherit kind of the secret knowledge of the business or whatever um, but our main character from that storyline is a woman and she is the most talented luthier in her family and so we follow her as she tries to kind of um, break through kind of the traditions of her family um, and then the other kind of storyline is this like donut shop um, which is owned by this like intergalactic family <laughs> basically, who are escaping some unknown entity in space and have landed on Earth and opened a donut shop. And that's kind of basically roughly the setup of this book. Um, I know that was like really vague and I do actually feel that this book feels very vague in what it's about. Um, but it really is just about these characters and their relationships with one another and their relationships with society and then talking about how they, none of them really like fit into society and how they navigate those complicated like social dynamics. Um, and the this book is really just about the fan family. Like that's really the vibes of this book. Also the music, I loved, I love, love, love the descriptions of music, the way that it makes you feel. I don't know, it really, it made me pick up my violin only once, but only, but it made me pick up my violin for the first time since 2019. So, you know, props to the book for doing that. I will say I don't really like the spacey theme. So like the whole donut shop storyline, didn't really care for that. I did not really care for like the intergalactic conflict situation. Um, but all in all, I really enjoyed this book. Um, I think if you are into like literary fiction, this definitely feels more like a literary sci fi to me personally. But I think a lot of people would really like this. Like I said, it is a more quiet sci fi. And a lot of people do find it comforting. I just I don't know if I personally would describe this as like a comforting book per se. I do have a couple of other books, but I feel like I've already been talking forever. So I'm going to save those for the next recent read. So you can look forward to that. Um, but that is it for today. As you can tell, I've not had the best reading year. Do I have a single five star on this list? I don't think I do. <laughs> I think the highest rating I've given 
in the last little while on these books anyway is like four stars if that so yeah really not my year for reading but i appreciate you being here nonetheless i hope this was an entertaining video regardless but yeah that is it for today um if you like this video please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below let me know what books you have been reading recently and if you have any recommendations for me because like i said i've been not been having the best reading year and so if you can recommend me my next five star read i would be eternally grateful um and if you like this video and you want to see more from me, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. That is it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time.